Welcome back to Love Lindsay, a captivating podcast that delves into the realms of things we've written in the past and embraces the sometimes cringy nostalgia that accompanies it. I decided, what do you say we keep these good vibes going? And I'm going to keep recording during this epic thunderstorm that we are having right now. So picture this, it's hollow week here in Traverse City, Michigan. We're preparing for hollow weekend coming up, arriving, and we have all the fall colors at peak right now, peak season, peak fall colors. Um, especially in our yard, we've got the gold oak leaves. We've got the gold pine needles, which I like to call our spooky autumn orange carpet all over the grass, the front deck. It's raining really hard. So I'm sitting in my dark bedroom. I've got the lights off and the rain is coming down on the sloped roof. So it's like extra close to my head. You might even hear some thunder boomers. I'm actually waiting for the power to go out, to be honest with you. Like, I feel like, I just feel like it's going to happen. Um, consulting the radar, it looks like we've got quite a bit more red, um, which means the most severe part, red thunderstorm activity happening for the next hour. So that's exciting. We love a good spooky thunderstorm. And what better way to record my Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos episode than in a thunderstorm. So if you don't know anything about Day of the Dead, it is um, more culturally Hispanic, Mexican, um, holiday where the veil is very thin between our side and the other side. And we celebrate those that have passed on, um, before us, our ancestors, our family members, the day, the people that we love, um, you know, we paint our faces, we eat sugar skulls, we do all sorts of cool stuff. Eddie and I personally, you know, I think I'll just let the blog speak for themselves about like what Eddie and I do, because I think I would just be redundant at that point. Um, so just get cozy, light a candle, get your tarot deck out, which is, and let's dive right in to today's blog post that I'll be reading. Today's uh, first post is called Dia de Muertos, Setting November Intentions, which is something that we do every year on this day. So this was written November 2nd, 2020. And I begin, wow, sheesh, you guys are really blowing up my blog and I love this. My numbers of readers towards the final days of Hollow Blog, including yesterday's final She Bang, were astronomical. And honestly, let me just tell you guys, as a sidebar, I'm feeling the same way about this podcast. I don't know how it keeps happening. I don't know where you listeners are coming from. Like, find me on social media. Tell me. Let a bitch know. Because every single week, we're on, I'm on my 16th episode right now. Every single week, my numbers for like my first day are getting bigger and bigger. And my numbers for all the way back to my first episode keep getting bigger every week. So this has just been incredible. I feel like I'm starting like a love Lindsay, like family. Um, it's just been so much fun. Um, and it's honestly like inspiring. Last week was my longest podcast episode yet. It was an hour long. An hour has always been my goal. I've got like my friends telling me like, oh, they're just not long enough. Like, why are you making them so short? The answer is I just didn't want to put too much pressure on myself, especially with going to school full time. This being my first podcast endeavor, I was worried about running out of um, material, inspiration. Um, but you guys are just, oh, this is just so cool. I just feel like I'm growing this family. I don't know. And the same way I felt my blog growing in 2020 is how I feel about my podcast growing right now. So 
Thank you. Welcome. Let's get back into the blog post. Um, thank you so much for all the support and dedication. I just want to make everyone feel good for at least a couple minutes a day because you do the same for me. Thanks for hanging in with my manic drug fueled posts while I ride out this steroid high. I didn't sleep a wink last night. I felt like I was floating a few feet off my bed. And then when I could no longer tolerate awaking constantly, I moved to the couch and had surreal and jarring dreams. My filled out and ready to drop off ballot crying loudly to me from my backpack purse. And then I talk about my super cute pink lounge fly Disney Cinderella purse. I had like a lounge fly baby backpack phase during like 2020. Um, and then I talk about how I'm a literal child and I have my 70th anniversary Cinderella lounge fly mini backpack. And then how like the zipper pulls are like little miniature scissors. And then like the straps are like, um, cause it's all about the scene where they're like her and the mice and birds are making the dress. And then I talk about how I want this other mini lounge fly backpack for Christmas. It's a whole lounge fly rant. Anyway, what a tangent. <laughs> and no, this November's intentions post is not about my materialistic Christmas wish list. I love, love, love to give and get gifts. It brings me immense joy, though. You guys, can I just do another sidebar? I'm obsessed with seeing other people's like Christmas wish lists. I love TikToks where you see other people's Christmas wish lists. Like I'm seeing so much like Sol de Janeiro. I'm seeing a lot of like Nike Dunks. I'm seeing a lot of like um, just like pink cute things and lots of like Lululemon. And I just, I love it. I'm getting sidetracked here. Let's get back to the blog. Um, this was supposed to be a continuation of yesterday's post talking about the rest of our Halloween party fixins, but now I have even more to tell you about. We pulled a spectacular Dia de los Muertos dinner last night, and it was just Eddie and I, and the ghosts of our loved ones. How did we pull that off? Well, I'll tell you. We made an altar at the head of our table with a black veil chair and black taper candles. We had treasures that represent our loved ones who have passed on. We had Peanuts cremains. Peanut, you guys, is my beloved cat that passed away in 2020. We had feathers and whiskers from past and present furry and feathered friends. Photos, papers with names written on them. My grandfather's flag. Eddie's grandfather's American Legion hat. A beloved family keepsake or two. Some crystals given to me by a dear friend before she passed unexpectedly last January. Some people couldn't be represented, so that's when I simply wrote their name. Some were there in spirit. Regardless if they were invited or not, it's not up to us. We were welcoming all of the love and positive energy from anyone who wanted to feast with us. We had phones and television silenced, no music, real flickering flames. We poured red wine into a glass at the head of the table and also had a bowl with natural food product waste to pour back into Mother Earth to thank her for our blessings. I also made a special Instagram stories reel to flip through if you want to see the setup and what we made for dinner. Eddie made an absolutely fabulous seared tuna over salad dish topped with pine nuts. Together we carved out medium-sized sugar pumpkins and seared the inside by baking them in the oven upside down on a baking sheet. After they were seared and sealed on the inside, we poured more of Eddie's homemade butternut squash soup inside and topped that with pumpkin seeds and other seasonings. It was so delicious and watch the Instagram highlights reel to see the pumpkin bowls in action. It's so cute. You guys I've spoken before about how important I think it is to explore other cultures and traditions and to freshen up the way we celebrate life and all the crazy that's involved down in my heart. I have faith and a fire of traditional Christian, but I also believe with my whole heart that God wants us to embrace life and make the best out of it. If that means celebrating with other forms from different faiths, then I think that's even better. 
I love to break bread and honor all the ways that people of this world choose to place their energy, make it personal, make it important, put in hard work and do things for yourselves and others. What you won't see in my highlight reel is our wizarding walk of intentions last night after dinner. Don't laugh, but Eddie and I have his and hers matching velvet hooded cloaks. We bundle up after dinner to take out the offerings to the earth, pour the wine. We walked the neighborhood and through a winding tree-lined path using the light of flickering battery-operated candles. We walked quietly and quickly and thinking deep and hard under our hard breathing and loud wind rushing past our ears. At first we made small talk as we warmed up, but then Eddie reminded me we have goals to discuss. So we set about discussing our November and December goals and intentions for ourselves and for others. What do those goals look like? What are we willing to sacrifice? And maybe it's the extra steroids, but I was anxiously discussing how we will alter these goals if the pandemic puts us in another lockdown. How will we balance our love of celebrating life with our budgeting and finances? How will eating mindfully through the holidays look? My overall goals usually start with taking the best possible care I can of Eddie and myself and make sure we eat right and keep exercising. Making sure we have a passionate, healthy, passionate and healthy love and sex life. Making sure we devote time and energy to our family and friends. Professional goals and what those look like. These are hard and stressful things to talk about, but somehow walking in the night like two secret squirrel hooded figures carrying candles and walking with intention made it easier to talk through and also somehow more important than a simple discussion over a rush dinner or exhausted and pondering deep shit while we slowly fall asleep on the couch. Get those tough topics on the table, people. Put them out there. What are you scared of? Tell your loved ones. Ask them what scares them. Listen and sympathize, then tell them how you think you can quell those fears together. Plan and make lists and plan some more. This is no time to go blindly. And when you have no energy to plan, go slowly and thoughtfully through your day as best you can. We did more of what I like to call the hard work last night. The hard work that no one sees but one must do to be a thoughtful and educated person in society. We sat down with our ballots and another glass of wine or two and went through each section together. With our laptops out and notes we made, we filled them out completely and carefully, read the directions and took out our hard-earned I Voted sticker before resealing for its grand send-off. Mama and Papa ballot were tucked away in my backpack purse to procreate more democracy, more democracy love babies as we slept. Or tried to. I have steroid insomnia. And today during our lunch break, we walked our ballots to the drop-off box and I commemorated by filming an Insta story. Eddie played a joke on me and it was funny as hell. I think the joke he played on me, he was like, after we dropped him, he was like, wait, is that the wrong box? I freaked out. Well, my computer hath crashed and I may have to publish this guy without tags, but I'll go back and edit them, I suppose. Please show me back here tomorrow for a special giveaway open to any United States voters. So that was the Dia de los Muertos blog post. And I have some other ones that I want to read to you guys. Since the veil is thin and the time is right, we are going to get our ghost story on tonight. So this next blog post is um, called The Ghost Inside the Phone, and it was written September 1st, 2020. So let's get right into it. This is a spooky one, you guys, and it's it's really cool, actually. It's got a lot of history. Um, it's been way too long since my last post. You could say I have had a writer's block of sorts. But the opposite is true. I've been writing plenty in my diaries and my creativity is ablaze. Honestly, I've been spending most of my energy dealing with tourists and fearing for the sanity of my co-workers as we deal with staffing issues among all the other worries one has in a time like this. I think I'm talking about my job at the little shop downtown Traverse City. 
I have the bliss of my home life for short periods of time. I can't go longer than five hours or so in this summer's shenanigans. Yeah, I cut my, I told um, the woman that owns a store, I can only work five hours at a time because she didn't let us sit down. You guys, like you had to walk in circles around this store the whole time, the entire shift. Like no wonder I lost 70 pounds my first year in Michigan. Like you had to walk the whole time. You weren't allowed to sit down. So I was like, bet. Okay. If we have to walk the whole time, guess what? I'm only working five hours. And I only allowed myself to work, I think, for like four shifts a week. Anyway, back to the blog post. Once I get a little past five hours, my brain starts to malfunction. I feel weak and flee to my home where I can turn my tuna melt brain back into Lindsay Loomis land. Having an amusement park as a brain has its delights and challenges. As always, I'm sharing with you all I'm sharing with you all not to complain, but to show you are not alone in your everyday experiences. It's concerning that I can't work more than my strict 20 hour limit per week before I go mad, but that's my life. Um, let's just talk about that. Yeah. 20 hours per week, not that much. However, like I said, look at the job I was working. It was an unair conditioned, stuffy, dusty, hectic as hell, retail, like tons of tourists constantly. And we weren't allowed to sit down. The Even the bathroom I had to use was like disgusting. And that was not a break. Like there were no breaks. So I think like at a regular, regular desk job, you guys, like where you can use the bathroom and it's clean and you have a lunch break and you can like take a deep breath and like take a step back. Like, yeah, that's a 40 hour a week job. This job was just, it was different. Anyway, let's get back to the blog post. I've set those boundaries for this very reason. I come home to stare at my phone for a few hours or fall asleep. I silently apologize to my friends, family, and passions that have sat untouched, and I grieve for the compassion I once had for everyone and everything. Although my therapist assures me that it's all still there, I'm just so tired. So that's been my life for the past several weeks. Oh, I've had getaways and secret adventures, though. Time to write about it. <laughs> I don't know if you guys just heard someone honk outside, but it was like perfect timing. Um, Eddie and I celebrated our fifth wedding anniversary this past weekend. We got married August 29th, 2015 in Virginia City, Nevada. It was a surreal, surreal ghost town in the mountains adventure with a secret Masonic ceremony. The first ever of its kind to be performed in our country. I plan to write blogs about it to present for our anniversary this year, but there's more of a 2020 that, but that's more of a 2021 type of thing to happen. The end of summer and the passing of our wedding anniversary always signals the arrival of spooky bitch season and all things creepy, macabre, and otherworldly. Bring me fall. The death and decay of seasons, the candy and sugar buzzes, let us go mad before the winter coops us up, December through April. I want scary stories to tell in the dark during the shortest days of winter. I'm having issues with my microphone here. Okay, there we go. Um, this is the cue for my reintroduction of my sister-in-law's passionate devotion to all things Halloween and her wonderful podcast called Ghost Magnet. Anytime we have a car ride to endure, listening to Bridget's podcast helps us pass the time. My dear and faithful readers may recall my post from last year describing our ghost hunting adventures with Eddie's family in Detroit. I want to remind you of our trip visit to the old asylum and extremely historical and haunted Eloise with Detroit Paranormal Expeditions. We took a tour during the safety of daytime and admittedly, Eddie and I were not impressed, at least not with the paranormal activity. The building itself, my God, it's beautiful and the items left behind, such as pianos, office furniture and dentist chairs, made this place an urban explorer's dream. But I had no hair raising moments or chills. Maybe we had to be there at night to experience something? 
I also have to remember, I was a completely different person a year ago. I was still barely used to leaving the house and socializing. So maybe the newness of post-California depression was blocking my senses. We took tons of photos and enjoyed a fantastic meal at a Mexican restaurant. And just like that, the night was over and everyone went home. We made plans to come back as soon as possible because I believe our thirst was not yet satiated. Fast forward to a couple months ago. Eddie scrolling through his Google Photos account and came across something not quite right. The photos we took at Eloise had, be, had been tampered with. But how? This isn't an old school camera with film, nor did we spend time in a dark room to cause these kinds of effects. This is the part where my mind wanders into difference, the difference between taking photos with a smartphone and taking photos with a real film camera. I had literally never seen anything like it. In one of the photos, the image of Bridget on a hospital bed is seen as a stenciled image over another photo, like the memory of another photo was showing itself. These photos have been viewed by us a few times already, and we didn't see them before. Did we miss something? Or did something follow us home and change them to get our attention? See example of the photos mentioned at the bottom of this blog post. Let me bring your attention back to the title of this blog, titled The Ghost Inside the Phone, which is an ode to the physiological theory of the ghost inside the machine, which hints at a cognitive dualism between body and mind. There is a doctrine about the nature and place of the mind, which is prevalent among theorists, to which most philosophers, psychologists, and religious teachers subscribe with minor reservations. Although they admit certain theoretical difficulties in it, we tend to assume that these can be overcome without serious modifications being made to the architecture of the theory. The doctrine states that with the doubtful exceptions of the mentally incompetent and infants in arms, every human being as both a body and a mind, the body and the mind are ordinarily harnessed together, but after the death of the body, the mind may continue to exist and function. Thinking about where the mind's energy goes after our body dies is just as spooky to me as thinking about ghosts because to me they are one of the same and there's our connection to our personal computers and cell phones my body my smartphone myself my phone is an extension of myself as it always as it's always with me even during sleep it only sits mere inches from my brain even when i take a shower it provides entertainment for me in the form of music how does this electronic device to, to look from ghosts from our past? Spirits interact with us not only in physical ways, but electronically as well. This is where the machine we're using at the time of the photos of Bridget were taken comes in. It's use to contact spirits from beyond the veil perhaps allows us an introduction to the ghosts and how to manipulate our devices to show us they are there. So what I'm talking about is this um, like ghost hunting machine thing used while we were at Eloise Asylum and it goes through like radio waves or something and like the ghost can manipulate it manipulate it to talk to you. I think it used something like an old vintage radio I'm trying to remember exactly what it looked like, but I can't remember. Um, so in my mind, I'm talking about how the ghosts at this asylum maybe learned how to use our phone by using first the machine they made for the ghosts to interact with, and then later jumped into our phones to manipulate these pictures that we took that looked fine for a year, and then suddenly they were messed up. Back to the blog post. Did a spirit jump from one machine to another? And is our body just as much of a machine in which to carry human energy as in electronic devices? Bridget sent the photos to an investigator who was with us that evening at the Eloise. After he looked into it, he was stumped as well. We are at a loss as to what happened in the, photo, in the photos, but surprised we are not by the strange happenings at this haunted location. It's developed a cult following of its own as events like this continue to happen time after time. Um, 
yeah, so this place is called the Eloise. It's near Detroit. It's an old um, hospital. Check it out. Um, back to the blog. As Eddie and I drove on the country roads this past weekend, passing cornfields, beautifully dilapidated farmhouses, and abandoned silos, we listened to one of her more recent episodes of Ghost Magnet. She had Josh Mailer- Mailerman musician and renowned horror author who wrote the novel behind the record-breaking Netflix stream film Bird Box as a guest. He was also with us during the day-to-night adventure in Haunted Exploration to Detroit, and they discussed the photos that Eddie had found in his phone. Do you guys remember Bird Box, that movie with um, Sandra Bullock, and they, like, had to, like, be blind, otherwise they would actually... This is giving me a craving to watch a movie again. Anyway, we when we went to um, Detroit for these ghost hunting things, we were able to meet up with Josh and his girlfriend, now wife, I think, um, and hang out with him, which is really cool to like meet someone that has a mind that writes stuff like that. So, so cool. Um, Back to the blog post. This episode was already one of my favorites before we heard the conversation about our haunted photographs. It makes me giddy to think that a small and intimate group of people from around the country made of authors, bloggers, celebrities, ghost hunters, and funeral directors slash embalmers can be brought together again and again by the trickery of ghosts and technology. Working together between people in California and Michigan, the photos were investigated and debunked for the most part, as anything explainable. If we can come together through technology to discuss ghosts, surely we can come together to discuss the ghosts in our own minds that may or may not be part of our own mental health. I have witnessed both now and briefly, my faith in humanity has been restored. I almost don't want to stop writing this today as I've experienced so much comfort in the process of writing to you today. And same for talking to you guys on this podcast. I'm always just like, so like, I just feel like we're in person and talking and hanging out and it's so addicting. Anyway, I feel like I'm talking to my closest friends and in a way I am. You readers are my true friends and family and I tell you everything. Every single day I think of more things I want to tell you about. Do things really happen to me if I don't write about it? I have so much to update you on. Fertility journey stories, vacation travel blogs, mental health crises, and everyday experiences. I'm tearing up with some wonderful, or excuse me, tearing up. I'm teaming up with some wonderful organizations and can't wait to share with you what I've been working on. I'm wrapping my brain around making an online class of sorts about how to write and publish a blog and how it helps my mental health. If you have any suggestions on what you would like to learn from a class like this, please do let me know. Secondly, at the moment, I am working on an article discussing women's mental health and what the COVID-19 quarantine lockdown did to hinder or help it. If you are a reader, old or new, and are a female willing to share your quarantine experiences, please reach out to me in any fashion. I could use your information anonymously if you choose. I'm asking for females in this instance, as this article for a website focusing on women's issues. Of course, I want to hear from everyone, no matter your gender, when it comes down to it all, we are just a brain inside of a box. I promise to see you again soon. So closing out this blog is the creepy, scary pictures. Um, they are kind of frightening and really cool. And you guys should check out my blog to take a look at it. If you go to my website, lindsayloomis.com, you click on the top, there's a Barbie dream house. Yes, I made this website and designed it in a Barbie theme before the Barbie movie came out this year. It just happens to be trendy now. This um, blog post is called The Ghost Inside the Phone. And so there's a search bar on top with a magnifying glass, type that in, and this blog post will come up. 
It's cool because also at the bottom, there's a comment from someone named Phil. And he said, OMG, I was there with you. Bridget and Josh came to Eloise with Detroit Paranormal Expeditions. I took some photos, but nothing odd or interesting showed up on them. The photos you posted are just crazy. Can't explain them. Wow. And I said, oh my God, awesome. We want to go back to Detroit soon and visit the Masonic building downtown. Thank you so much for reading and commenting. It seriously made my day. So let's get into our next blog post. So I thought maybe next what I would read is the blog post that was about said trip with Eddie's family when they visited and we went to the Eloise and the things we did before and after. And this blog post is titled um, Michigan Adventures and it was written October 7th, 2019. Yay, a pre-pandemic blog post. And it starts, do you have post-vacation depression? Because I do. And my therapist tells me going on vacation with family and then having to say goodbye when it's all over can cause grief and that's okay. I think it's true. But you know what else is true? That when you are in that sadness or grief, you feel completely alone and like you are the only one who feels it. When I feel like this, it's nice to go through the trip in my mind with pictures to feel better. You guys, that is absolutely so true. And it still happens to me to this day. Like we went to go visit Eddie's family in California last week and I came back and just the hecticness of like flying back, like the way the two, our two layovers were set up. Um, We couldn't even stop to go to the bathroom or get food. We had to run both layovers. Um, so you're just tired, you get home, it's like three hours later than what you're used to in California. You're just tired. Like I still had to go back to school. Like it just sucks, dude. And then it add to all that you were just with your family that you haven't been with in like a year and you don't know when you're going to see them again. And yeah, post vacation depression is a bitch, but I can still get back to my life for the most part. It used to really just like cripple me. Anyway, back to the blog post. Eddie's family came to visit us last month and I feel like a tourist in my own state. The weather was perfect and warm and sunshiny most of the time. I love September in Michigan. October is better for leaf colors, but it starts to get pretty cold. The first place we went was Mackinac Island. I'd been there, of course, growing up in Michigan, but this was a totally new experience for me. We stayed at the Chippewa Hotel, which is literally right at the ferry launch. Not too far to walk with our luggage at all. And no stay here is complete without a visit or two to the Pink Pony. This place was so cute. The clothing there was adorable. And look at these adorable tumblers. I have some similar vintage glasses and they are so cute. Dear Santa, dot, dot, dot. It's again, me talking about my Christmas wish list. Ah, it gives me chills thinking about Christmas wish list. Like I just love this time of year. Um, yeah, you guys, the Chippewa Hotel is so cool. It's like historic. It, there's just like really cool sconces all over the walls and like amazing vintage, like retro wallpaper. And then there's the pink pony, which has like literal pink like carousel horses and like a shop where everything is pink pony themed it's such a cool place I highly recommend it back to the blog post we got an amazing suite that had two bedrooms and a balcony overlooking the 12 person spa and live music and then I post some pictures there's one of um One thing I love about Mackinac Island is that everybody goes all out with like gardening and landscaping and the florals there are just like giving you life. Then there's a picture of um, Eddie's dad, stepdad, mom and Bridget looking down at the water. And then there's a pink pony glass with orange juice in it. And then I say we started our time on the island by doing a long and beautiful but informative horse and carriage ride tour. As most of you know, there are no cars allowed on the island. We explored by foot as well and hiked up a hill to the fabulous Grand Hotel, featured in the movie Somewhere in Time. 
this hotel is the most beautiful and elegant of any hotel I've ever been to or seen. The decor inside and flowers and landscaping outside are absolutely fabulous. So I think I'm talking about this hotel like I'd never been there before because I'm seeing it with new eyes. I had been there before growing up. My mom and I would go there for like tea time um, when we would stay on the island. But as an adult with an appreciation for decor and like vintage, like glam, I'm just like, oh, it's like heaven on earth. Also, you guys, I stayed there. Eddie and I stayed there during Halloween season um, last year, 2022 with or was that 2021 2021 um with eddie's little sister um and her husband and i have a vlog that thoroughly goes through that stay and all the fun stuff we did so i would check that out on my youtube channel you can access that through lindsayloomis.com let's get back to the blog post so again, I had been there before, just not as an adult who could have truly appreciate it all. Okay, so that was literally what I just said. Everything there is classic in style, yet on trend, from the houndstooth couches to the palm leaf Regency fabrics and the antique art and furniture. We explored the pool area, the labyrinth. I love a good labyrinth. And had great conversation with family around the most elegant water fountain I had ever seen. And then I showed the houndstooth couch. You know we spent some time in our hometown of Traverse City as well. We enjoyed going to our favorite meat shop in Delhi um, called Max Bowers and picked out goodies for grilling out and their amazing beef jerky dip. Eat it with crackers. It's so good. I had to take the family to Mackinac Brewing and shop at Cherry Republic as well. We had a good evening with my parents visiting as well, and we grilled out and enjoyed a dinner together around our huge dining room table. It was a cozy night, and it was great for everyone to be reunited again after our wedding in 2015. That's so funny that I describe our dining room table as huge. It's really not, but we had just purchased our house like months before this visit, and we didn't really have a real dining room the whole 10 years we lived in San Francisco. So having a dining room table to me was like huge. Back to the blog post. Our next stopping point during our Michigan adventure was the Eloise Asylum in Detroit. It's spooky, abandoned, and has a history scene. No, we were there on a ghost hunt. Well, it was more of a tour because we didn't stay too long and it was daylight, but we were able to do some cool experiments and take tons of photos. Shout out to Detroit Paranormal Expeditions for getting us there. There is a ton more stuff going on with Bridget's podcast and the Eloise and members from the Detroit Paranormal team being featured. Please give her podcast a listen to hear more about it. Um, and as a sidebar, she doesn't have that podcast anymore, but do check out her um, podcast that she's had for the last year called Girls Next Level. It is, I think, in the top five or three podcasts in the country. I'm not kidding. This is like amazing to me that this is my sister-in-law that has this immensely popular podcast. And she talks about, they talk about the TV show that they had um, in the early 2000s called Girls Next Door. If you guys have listened to my earlier blog uh, podcasts, read my blog posts, or just know Eddie and I, then you would know that the Girls Next Door is very much a part of our history. And Eddie was on that TV show and I recorded an episode of that TV show, The Same Trip Home That He Met Me. So check out Bridget's podcast since um, Ghost Magnet isn't a podcast anymore. In Okay, back to the blog post. Another big shout out to Josh Millerman, author of Bird Box, for treating us all to a fantastic dinner of Mexican food and margaritas. You guys, this is so weird because I feature pictures of Eloise in this blog post and it was before the pictures were like tampered with. And they're completely normal. This is so crazy. So if you want to compare the pictures and... Um, the blog posts a year apart. This blog post is on my blog on my website and it's titled Michigan's Adventures. Let's get to the next paragraph. 
After dinner, we explored the Detroit Police Old Sixth Precinct building. It was pretty darn creepy inside, but it has a new purpose. The new owner is slowly trying to restore it to its former glory and use the building as a data storage facility with a coffee bar. With all the bullet holes and rusty jail cage doors and not to mention ghosts, we wish him the best of luck. While in Detroit, we also toured around by foot near our hotel and took pictures in front of the Masonic Building and Detroit Riverwalk. So much beautiful architecture and infrastructure. Last but not least, it's my favorite part. My first time at Bronner's in Frankenmuth. Bronner's is a giant Christmas store that holds anything and everything related to holiday decorations and Frankenmuth, known as Michigan's Little Bavaria because of all of the adorable architecture. I mean, please look at this city and the snowy winter wonderland. I cannot wait to go back. Do you love road trips? Thank you so much for stopping by. So that's the end of that blog post. I have another one to read. And its title is perfect for today. And it also um, is just an ode to back when my platform was very much solely centered on mental health. This blog post is called The Ghosts of Mental Illness. And it was written July 22nd, 2019. And I start out by saying, upon moving to Traverse City, Michigan, I was eager to check out the old state mental asylum. I found a book about it right away at our local bookstore. The book is one of those old black and white photo generic history books that you can find all over the country. Eddie and I love these books and pick them up whenever we are traveling or trying to learn about a new place. I was able to lay in our comfy bed or couch and watch the snow fall outside and read about the history of the state hospital before going to see it myself. You guys, exploring Traverse City after first moving here from San Francisco was so fun. Like, I would give anything to go back and, like, relive those days. Anyway, the building itself is one of those old Kirkbride. And, I yet, and yes, I knew what a Kirkbride building was before I moved here because these hospital buildings were inspired, were inspiring and way before their time. As far as letting in sunshine and waiting and wanting all over quality of life to be higher for those committed. Buildings I know of that hasn't been torn down and even better was made to put in modern day use. Click those links I gave to learn more. It's interesting stuff. Anyway, there are still abandoned buildings on the hospital property and plenty of forest patches and lots of trees. It makes a perfect mix between haunted and historical. While researching before my first visit, I began to see the irony of my situation. Here I was a mental illness sufferer, and I am excited to visit an old quote-unquote insane asylum. I couldn't help but think of the spookiness and ghosts that might remain there for the living to interact with. But the more I researched, the more I found that the overall feedback from the community is that it was a decent place and it tried hard to take care of its patients in a humane and better way. When my aunt and uncle visited us, I was told a charming story about a friend of theirs whose parents had met at the old hospital as patients. This is the same aunt and uncle that um, a year or two later, they came back and we did like a tour of like the old um, hospital and the tunnels underneath. Anyway, back to the blog. We first went to the newly renovated Traverse City Village Commons on a freezing cold and blustery blizzardy Saturday for the indoor farmer's market, and that was such a cool experience. We could have spent hours talking to the vendors and buying locally grown and made amazing goodness, but we had a little ghost hunt of our own to embark on. We, or mostly I, wanted to check out the infamous hippie tree. It has the legend to be a portal to hell. How bad could it be? P.S. That Atlas Obscura link is awesome, and I love Atlas Obscura website as a whole. I've spent many hours down the rabbit hole discovering crazy and creepy destinations all over the world. So, you guys, I'm talking about this. I don't know how it came to be. Check out Atlas Obscura website or Google Hippie Tree in Traverse City, Michigan. There's this tree. 
and supposedly it's a portal to hell and when we went there on this like crazy wintry blizzardy saturday i made eddie walk with me to the middle of the woods to this hippie tree we walked through the forest and melted snow with tons of dog turds coming up out of the slush as we were slipping and sliding on the snowy trails we were passing families going for a hike as well as a homeless man bringing breakfast in a to-go container to his wife in the woods charming we arrived to hippie tree about 20 minutes of hiking and following our google gps there were kids climbing all over the painted branches and moms on the side watching i couldn't believe the supposed portal to hell was more like a playground to view videos of that day go to my instagram and check out the travel stories i'm telling you during the last or during the day at least the grounds of the old state hospital are downright cheerful, not creepy. Interest in the ghostly and macabre runs in our family, on both my side and Eddie's side. Some of you may know that Eddie's sister, who is a ghost hunting queen, has a weekly podcast out called Ghost Magnet. Please give this show a listen because it's awesome. It's a rare glimpse behind the scenes of the haunted Hollywood and more. Here's her Facebook link as well. My favorite episode in particular is the one with my husband, where they did an entire episode dedicated to Eddie's experiences in the Army, helping in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina, and other tales from the life of a funeral director in Trade and Balmer. I linked the Spotify link for this episode here, is the Apple link as well. And then I show a picture of Eddie and Bridget on Halloween a few years ago where they um eddie did the special effects makeup on both of them and then i say plans are in the works for eddie's parents and sister to visit this september to do some more ghost hunting in detroit and mackinac island we'll still have our apartment at that time so his visiting family will have a free two bedroom two bathroom hotel with an amazing pool god i love that pool that's it for now talk soon P.S. Is it Halloween season yet? So I wrote this in July. We were still at the apartment, but we had already um, purchased our house. So, wow, it's just crazy how all of these, like, blog posts are connected. And I just, reading these has just been so much fun. I hope that you guys are having fun with me going through the past you guys, today has just been such a fun experience talking to you, recording these episodes with the rain coming down. I've been in kind of a funk lately, admittedly, um, since we got back from our trip. Um, I'm just not feeling like myself since we got back. Like, I'm just, I'm just not feeling myself. Like I got, um, as a sidebar about my own personal life, I got extensions. I love having long hair. Um, and I got new extensions put in. They didn't work. They fell out and my hair just felt like so thin and icky after that, because after you have extensions, you just like your real hair just feels like it's not right. And I've just felt ucky. Um, Eddie and I did join a new gym. So we're enjoying going to that. But like just between that and like the Halloween costumes I ordered, like barely fitting. I've just felt I'm just not feeling myself. And my goal coming up in this next year is to feel fit. Like I'm turning 40 and that starts with an F. So I just want to feel fit and 40 and fit and 40 is like my, like, it's just going to be like what 2024 is all about. Like I'm already so excited, but, um, I'm always on a fitness journey. Always like my fitness journeys never end. I'm constantly looking for ways to just be a better person, whether it's going to school and getting new degrees, um, finishing old degrees, um, 
you know, trying new fitness things, new yoga classes, or like starting to swim laps again, or joining new gyms. I'm just always looking at at self-improvement and yeah, sorry for the tangent. I think I'm just really open right now and just, I've just loved spending a few hours here chatting with you guys. It's been great. So, um, I'm already working on my episode for next week for next Wednesday. I'm so excited. I cannot wait for you guys to listen. I hope you're having a good day of the dead or whatever day you're listening to this on. Please check out my website, lindsayloomis.com for all my blogs, vlogs, and then um, our NMML merch is on there. If you want a discount for our merch, hit me up and I'll hook you up as a podcast listener. Um, Yeah. And also please go to Spotify if you're listening on there and please give me a rating. It really helps um, as a female in a male dominated industry of podcasting. um, I could take all the help I can get. Also, if you're not, if wherever you're listening, if you're listening on Facebook, give me a comment there. If you're listening on the Podbean app, give me a comment or a rating there. I really appreciate it. I love you guys so much. This love Lindsay family is just giving me life. I don't know who you are or where you are, but my numbers are just soaring. Like I said, at the beginning of the podcast, they're just getting better and better every week. Like this is just so much fun. I'm always looking for new people to have on here. We don't have to record in person. The podcast software I have allows me to very easily send you a link and we can record from wherever you are. So if you have something you want to read, even if it's not a full episode, if you want to just read one little thing and then be done, cool. Let's do it. Let's collaborate. I will see you guys here next week, next Wednesday on another episode of Love Lindsay.